Rogers, I've never played with a person that worked as hard as he did at his craft. And, you know, when he came into Buffalo in the trade from Chicago, it was like, hey, who's this guy? Yeah. And just his, his style at the beginning, everybody just kind of looked at it and overlooked him and never really gave him that opportunity. And when he finally did, after Grant Fuhrer went down, it was like from that first night on in his first game, it was like, wow. You know, like what this guy is obviously unique, different, and but amazing. And I just think over the years, sometimes you, you took advantage of that and you didn't put it, uh, you know, into the way you probably should, how well he played and how big of an opportunity he gave us. And, and, and it gave a young team and a not-so-good team but an opportunity to play and play well in front of him and relax because you just kind of took it for granted. Hey, Dom's back there. Dom's going to make the save. But I never was with a guy over 15 years that uh, in practice – he wouldn't leave the ice until he was satisfied with his day, um, whether we didn't work hard enough or whether he didn't make the save that he wanted to in practice or feel good enough about his game. You know, I can countless times when he'd keep guys out after practice just to keep working on things and pushing you. And, yeah, he was a guy who was a different bird off the ice. He, yeah. he walked to his own beat. But on the ice, uh, it was strictly business. And he was a guy that was so competitive, uh, you know, within the dress room. He felt like he was a leader on the team as well. Uh, he just, his conditioning was second to none. Not a very big guy, but I can remember the one night we went into, what, quadruple overtime with New Jersey. And it was ended up at like 10 to 2 in the morning. And you talk to him afterwards, and he says, I might have had one or two more periods in me, and that's about all I could have had. So, you know, <laughs> that was, what would that would have been, you know, so... Amazing, just amazing, uh, you know, what he did. And, and for, for myself to see, have a good opportunity to see, you know, your Brodeurs and your Waz and your Fears and all these guys and get a chance to play with them, you know, there's there was none better than uh, Dominic. Yeah, and, and it's funny you say how competitive he was. And even when he left the NHL, he went and kept playing and kept playing. And he, you, you can't stop the guy from playing hockey. No, and I think that goes back to a lot of his conditioning and, and the way he just loved the game. Yeah. That, uh, he didn't want to walk away from it. And, and I, you can appreciate that. And whether he went home and, and when he left us, uh, obviously there was some – you know, sour grapes when he left to go to Detroit because he walked away and, and really I mean, might not have done it the proper way, but, uh, you know, so be it. Uh, he did it and he had success, so you can't uh, blame the guy for that. But, you know, I think over the years the guys have kind of got over that and, and realized, uh, you know, what a great opportunity we had playing with uh, one of the best there ever was. So how long does it take for something like that to be water under the bridge when, it, when a player leaves or you have a, a bad situation and now – Everybody's happy is going into the Hall of Fame. So is it after the career is over, you kind of you yeah. forgive it? Yeah, you do. Because when you're still playing against them and uh, seeing them have success and, you know, going to Detroit, winning a cup, and and not really – the problem being it wasn't maybe how he left. It was, you know, it was all maybe I did this and I did that. And, and you know, he kind of just uh, never really gave much credit to the guys in front of him. And that's, I think, where guys got it. But it always – it, it, time goes by, sure. and it doesn't matter. You know, over the years, you fight guys a hundred times, and you know when you you see them in a in a situation away from the game years after, it's you know you talk, and it's like nothing ever happened. And I think uh, it's just too long to hold a grudge. Uh, I think I hold more of a grudge uh, in the no goal with Brett. Hall yes, of than, course. Uh, you know, yeah. Dom Hashik walking away, but uh, no, it's fine. You know, you you learn to deal with that type of thing over the years, and and, and it's ha it's over with. Yeah. So the Sabers now we got a big uh, we got a big draft coming up. They yeah. got a they got a big decision to make on uh, I guess it's next Friday. And uh, where do you think they're going with this now? Well, right now you're sitting in second spot. I, I think Tim uh, really wants to add another first rounder, and I think that he's going to be willing to make some deals, make some kind of a movement where he can get that second pick in the first round. Uh, whether it's moving his position, I think it'll depend on what Florida does, uh, you know, on who he's going to take. But I think he's going to try to put something together where he can, can find himself into the, maybe the top 15, you know, two picks, uh, you know, in this draft and, and, and maybe give up a little extra. We're sitting there and you've got a ton of picks in the next uh, two drafts after this. You've got a ton of second rounders. You've got a ton of, you know, everything that's coming in. You know, you still got St. Louis's pick and, and the Islanders pick next year. So he's got ammunition. He's got something to work with. And what everybody there appreciates about Tim is he's willing to try things. And the way he's talking, and he's been a man of his word to this point, where he is – He's going to say something, and he's going to try to do it. He's not going to sugarcoat it, and, and he's aggressive. And I think that's just something that we've really missed in Buffalo for an awful long time, having somebody in control, being aggressive, and willing to take some chances to try to make things better. I remember we've been on the air now for nine years, and I remember maybe the first three, four years that we were on the air, uh, 
telling list tell, telling LA King fans to be patient. You say, you know, you got a good team, you got a good thing going here. It's 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 coming, and I know sometimes fans are a little impatient for these things to, to transpire. And I look at the Sabres situation now, and now they're going to start to get some draft picks into the house and some young players coming up. And so, how long now do do we have to be patient with Buffalo Sabres? Fans? Well, I, you know what? Uh, as I say about Tim Murray coming out and being totally honest and upfront, exactly what he's trying to do. The fans in Buffalo have bought into that. So what he's done, he's bought them time. Uh, so. You know, two, three years down the road, I, I think you've got to look at this team. I, even even maybe the young kids that he picks this year, they might not even be a part of the Sabres team this year. They may go back to junior, give themselves an opportunity to, you know, to mature that little bit more and then bring them all in together. You know, you kind of like to have all those kids together. You've got Ritzelein and Zadorov, uh, you know, in, in London this year. Excellent. I, I still think that kid is going to be the best of the best. And Ritzelein in this year came from being a – a little boy to leaving this year being a man at the end of the year from the experience he had and what he had at the World Junior and how well he did and his improvements. So defensively, we've got some real solid guys. And I think, uh, you know, Tim's job this year is to, to start filling in up front. Um, we've got a, a tremendous amount of talent up there, but it's, you know, all different talent. He's got to start bringing in some guys that can kind of pull all that together. And, and they'll be fine. I would say within three years you could look at this hockey team and I'm not saying it could be in a Colorado situation, yeah. but I think it'll be in a similar situation. Yeah, what can we expect from Tyler Myers this year? He's a former Calder Trophy winner right here at these awards. Well, I'll tell you that uh, I would say that the door is open to every one of those kids with the, the exception of maybe Ritzelainen and uh, Gergensen's maybe that if there's a deal to be made, that Tyler Myers might be that guy that uh, you know maybe out there that Tim Murray could use to to do what he wants to do. Uh, Tyler's a hell of a player, and he's a he's a great talent. He's a good kid. Uh, he may be in a position right now where he may be that guy that that brings in and what you have to to put you over the top to to make that big difference to bring in that player that you might need. And 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 Tyler's got still to an upside still. That, uh, you know, anybody, if it did happen or if he stays, great. You know, I'm not saying, but he's just that player, probably one of the few players you have in your team that you could dangle out there and yeah. say, hey, look at this kid. He's a hell of a player. He's a good kid. He's, he's got, he's a total package. He's young. He's got a contract. You know what you're going to have to pay him for the next four or five years. So, you know, teams could be interested in yeah. that. And, and I wouldn't be surprised that he might be that guy dangled. But I would say everybody within that dressing room, with the exception of a couple, three guys, uh, you know, I wouldn't really be real comfortable in my positioning with yeah. the Sabres. So, yeah. you know, and I think Tim's uh, aggressive enough that he, he's going to use every angle he can. See, I, I never th- – a team like the Sabres who are going to finish low this year and, and you're saying is going to be a little bit of a rebuild, I never understand teams that grab these young players in those positions and put them right in the lineup. Let them, let them grow a little yeah. bit and put them I – mean, we, we saw it with Jonathan Taves just a couple of years ago. They didn't break, the Hawks never brought him right back up. They ended up low, you know, getting the uh, lucky in the lottery draft and getting Kane right after that. But then they had the two blue chips to start, and everything else fell in place. And I always point to Jonathan Tate and say they didn't bring him up right away. No. Let him go down there and play. They have a situation right now with Greg Aranko that they brought yes. in. He, he played too many games, so he could not go back yeah. to junior. You're in a situation, what do you do with them? You know, he's not old enough to play in the minors yet. He's not good enough to play in the NHL yet, and there really wasn't a position for him in juniors. So you had to do what you could do. You kept him on the team. You played him when you can, but he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And he's yeah. still probably not ready to play. So, you know, even this year, you've still got to make the decision, where are you going to have this kid? Where is he going to be able to play? And that's the problem when they're too young. Yeah, they may have a week or two that all of a sudden everybody thinks, hey, this kid's going to be the next one. Yeah. We'll keep him here. You keep him a little too long. And then reality sets in, and then you're stuck. You don't know what to do. And, and it's a it's a bad position to be in. Uh, you know, the Sabres not wanting to be in that position. It's just that's what they inherited, and now they have to deal with it. But, uh, yeah, too many times these kids are coming in, and they're not ready. Uh, the best thing, you know, I went through the minors, and, and so many other guys that I played with did go through them. But that's where you mature. That's where you grow. You become a pro. You learn how to be a pro. But the big thing is if you're going to build a hockey team, that's where these guys come together. That's where they get to know each other and they become that brotherhood. So when they make that next step that, uh, you know, they know each other. There's no wondering what everybody's about. They, they've grown up together. They're a team. Look at the Edmonton Oilers. These kind of guys were, were together for a long time. And that's the best thing. You've got to have that brothership uh, you, or you're not going to have that commitment and, and that uh, togetherness that you need. Rob Ray, thanks for joining us here. Really appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of the week in Vegas here. A couple of days, I guess we're here for 
It's not a bad place to uh, no. Spend it's not a, a bad, bad place day. to hide a little bit. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Just, I'm waiting to phone home and tell my wife that I'm actually here. Then I'm not going to be home till Thursday. So <laughs> that's my next step. Thanks, Rob. All right, take care, Rob Ray. Everybody.